hundreds of them are in jeopardy if we don't if we don't get I agree completely I think they're counting on that and they're counting on the predictability of there not being discriminatory practices and a meaningful enforcement mechanism and it's what if that's what draws capital to them that's what makes them invest but let's go to universal service will the draft before us today guarantee a protection of universal service for all Americans um, Senator, only if you're looking at old-fashioned telephone service. I think if you're looking for investment in broadband and you're looking for making it more affordable as drafted, it does not reach. How them. about senior citizens' protections? Would that be protected? Not for broadband, Senator. How about guaranteeing that rural America is served? Would that be guaranteed? Uh, not for broadband, as I read it, Senator Markey. How about accessibility for the deaf and the blind? I'm the author of almost every, every telecommunications law mandating accessibility for the deaf and the blind in America. And by the way, all these devices are now accessible because of that. Would that, would that be protected? Could that be advanced? No, Senator, only for telephone service. Not okay, right. thank you. Now, let's go to privacy on the Internet. Would privacy be protected? Would there be, under this formulation, would, be, would the FCC be able to move in order to protect the privacy of America? Senator, as I read it, the customer proprietary network information protections are all entitled to there for telecommunications service, so not broadband unless it is considered a telecommunications service. Thank you. And so we've got all of these things that are there that uh, right now everyone is used to, everyone believes is going to be a part of the future. But if we don't move to Title II, we don't get them, and under the draft that we have right now, they are not there. And so this is a big debate that we have to have in our country, especially when the chief financial officer of Verizon, Verizon says that it won't affect their investment strategy at all if Title II is used. That's Verizon. But it will affect Douala, Etsy, hundreds of smaller companies who are the innovative companies. They're the ones that change. They're the ones that are branded made in America. Today we're Google and Hulu and YouTube, but... There's a whole new generation coming up 10 years from now whose names we're going to know. Only if we keep it open and they can reach the capital markets and then reach customers on a non-discriminatory basis. And so that's a huge challenge for us here in the committee to get it right, Mr. Chairman, uh, to make sure that this free flow of capital that's now going out of the venture capital firms into the new software and Internet companies uh, is not inhibited, that we don't create uncertainty for these companies that are really the heartbeat of what it is that young people all across the country are, are saying they, that, that they want. Net, net, network, network neutrality is just a fancy word for non-discrimination. And in the same way that the Civil Rights Act says non-discrimination in schools and uh, counters for people to go and be served, same thing is true over here. Net, net, network neutrality is just a fancy word of saying that anybody can get in. Anyone can compete. Anyone can innovate. Uh, and we have to protect that in America because that is what has happened over the last 20 years. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.